Hello and welcome to the Bath Studio School. My name is Anna McMenemy and I am here today with Jess Gay, a senior community and events fundraiser from Julian House, a local homeless charity. Welcome Jess. Hello. <laughs> Could you please tell us about your background and how you became involved with Julian House? Yeah, sure. So um, for a long time, I was actually in marketing. So I used to work for a food and drink B2B company and did the social media for them. Um, and I'd always done charity work on the side. So that was something I was really passionate about. And as soon as I worked my way up in marketing, I kind of realized that charity was more of my focus. And um, I've lived in Bath for quite a long time. And homelessness has always been an issue that I've been passionate about, wanting to solve a problem. So something came up at Julian House and it was the perfect opportunity so I went for it. Could you please tell us more about what Julian House does? Yeah, of course. So um, Julian House is a southwest based charity. A lot of people think it's just based in Bath, but we cover Bristol, uh, Cornwall, Exeter, uh, Basingstoke. So it's uh, it's quite a big charity now. We're mainly known for um, helping people who are suffering from homeless. Um, so we do have a hostel in Bath and we have lots of supported accommodation to help people uh, kind of come off the streets um, and get into um, kind of more, find more sustainable um, independent ways of living. But the charity also does, um, helps a wide, a wider range of people and that includes um, women, children and men escaping domestic abuse. Um, it also includes adults suffering from or having learning difficulties. Um, um, and we also help people um, who are leaving prison, so trying to uh, re rehabilitate them back into society. I noticed on your website that you don't take under-18s in Bath. So where where do they go? Do they know how to access your charity? Uh, I see. So um, you mean like into our hostel? Yeah. Yeah, so um, actually in uh, Devon, we do have something called a uh, night stop, and that specifically works for uh, younger children who are um, sleeping on the streets. And uh, basically they move uh, they move in with a host family, so a family hosts them um, to live with them. But in Bath, yeah, we do normally um, only work with um, adults or over 18-year-olds. Um, I think there are some other facilities available in Bristol, but um, at the moment we don't have the facilities for that. Could you please tell us why or how people become homeless? Yeah, um, it's a really complicated um, issue, really. Um, there's a multitude of reasons, and normally it's not just one. So it could be a family breakdown. Um, it could be um, something to do with addiction, drugs, alcohol, gambling. It could be a family member who's had that, and that, that um, impacts their, their son or daughter or uh, vice versa. Um, it could be a loss of job, loss of employment. Um, obviously in Bath especially, the um, housing market is really intense. Um, there's not that much affordable housing around, so as soon as you lost that, lost that job, you can't afford to pay rent and you're out on the streets. Um, yeah, it could be prison leavers, could be, we've had people um, coming from the army, um, from such like an establishment to come out into normal society. It can be really hard to adjust and they find themselves on the street. So it's normally a big multitude of reasons, not just one. I noticed you talked about drug addiction. How do you support and protect other people in the hostel if there is someone on drugs or struggling with drugs? Yeah, so um, it can be really difficult. In our hostel, we have a no alcohol or drugs policy, so you can't bring... Um, can't bring either of those in so nobody is using it within a hostel but obviously we do have clients who do use it on the streets um, and it is extremely difficult um, with those particular individuals um, we run certain kind of counselling schemes as such to try and get them off so a rehabilitation program uh, we also have separate accommodation for people who are um, still using drugs and run a dry house so um, basically they um, kind of get them on like methadrome or something else to take them off the serious drugs and then that slowly weans them off until they, they're able to go into the dry house so they're no longer addicted. So we always work very closely with them to try and help them with their addiction and help them get off it. That's really great. What can members of the community do to support Julian House? Um, loads, really. Um, I think because homelessness is such a prevalent issue, you know, you see it every day on the streets. It's just about raising awareness. I think there's a huge issue with um, homeless people in that they're extremely isolated. You know, people walk past them, they don't they don't give them eye contact. And as, as someone who lives on the streets, like regularly, that can be extremely demoralizing. Um, it can cause severe kind of mental problems. Um, so just having that awareness, I think that kind of compassion as a member of society to think about maybe their background, what they've gone through. Um, in terms of what actions they can do, there's a fantastic app um, 
called Street Link, and if they see somebody on the streets, um, they can write down where they saw them on this app, and that information immediately comes to Julian House. So our um, outreach team then goes out to find that person and bring them into our service. Um, in terms of supporting the charity, there's again loads of options. Uh, we have lots of fundraising events. So we've got the Big Bath Sleep Out, the Circuit of Bath Walk. Um, people, schools, for example, have done their own fun fundraisers for us, and all of that money obviously goes into running our services, which is really vital. That's really good. Is it a rewarding job? Massively so, yeah. Um, it's my favourite job ever, I would say. It's extremely varied, and I know that kind of every bit of effort that I put in goes towards basically helping to save somebody's life. What's the biggest challenges you face? Um, yeah, I would say probably public perception. Um, you know, obviously with especially homelessness, um, there is some negativity from society towards that. You know, you see people kind of in their worst states. You know, some people can be aggressive. There is that kind of negative attitude that everyone's on drugs or addicted somehow. Um, so I think it's kind of trying to change people's perceptions, trying to get to see, trying to allow them to see the individual behind the homelessness mask. How do you support people who come to the shelter who have severe mental health issues or drug issues? Yeah, um, so like I previously mentioned a little bit, um, our caseworkers work really close on an individual basis. So whoever comes in, they get assigned to like one key caseworker and they build that relationship up. So there's that level of trust. I think for a lot of people who, who you know come in, they've been let down by family, family members, friends, colleagues, for example. So they find it hard to find those bonds. So that's why we work on an individual basis. Um, so there's counselling, especially for people who suffer um, from severe mental um, mental problems. Um, and then we also run like a rehabilitation programme for people who are addicted to kind of get them off it and also to kind of give them confidence, to give them self-worth. So things like job opportunities, volunteering opportunities, back to college, we run all those kind of social enterprises to kind of give them that self-worth back. What are the biggest risks for the homeless and all staff involved? All staff? Yeah. Uh, biggest risk for homeless people? Um, I would say, um, uh, although it sounds horrific, death. Um, for people who are homeless, I think the kind of age expectancy is 46 uh, for men. Um, and, you know, that's that's half of what, you know, you or I would would be. And that's because they live an extremely rough life. You know, they're um, from constantly pounding the streets. They get things like trench foot. Um, they're exposed to diseases, illnesses. They don't have the immune system that you or I do because they don't have the nutrition. Uh, they, they live in an extremely dirty environment. Um, in terms of staff, um, I mean, sometimes, yeah, um, I guess they can be exposed to dangerous situations. They are out with extremely vulnerable people. Um, sometimes they can be very aggressive. Um, and so we have had some of those instances. They have, they're very rare, but um, all our staff are obviously trained to kind of deal with that. And you've got to remember that these people are at their extreme lowest. They are, they are kind of vulnerable and they will kind of hit out to anyone who's trying to help them. But yeah. You mentioned um, death. How do you support the people in the shelter who perhaps know someone who has died on the streets? Yeah, um, of course, it, that is extremely tough because the homeless community is very tight. You know, you do kind of form bonds with people. It's like your classmates or your best friends kind of out there. Um, we run counselling services, um, and obviously our key workers work one-to-one -one with each individual person. So they've kind of got like a friendship. Obviously, it's more professional, but that friendship kind of bond. Um I guess it's just that support that you would offer, you know, a colleague, friend or whatever again. Um, but yeah, it is tough. It's, it's like losing a family member, I suppose. If someone is homeless due to maybe a family member dying or they might not have anybody else, how would you support other people going to their funeral or something like that? Is there a funeral for these people? Uh, for any, like, member who's died, like, the homeless community? Yeah, if they don't have other family, I mean, who's going to arrange a Yeah, funeral? yeah, absolutely. Um, so I don't totally know if we um, have ever arranged a funeral, but, like I mentioned, our caseworkers do become really close, and so they have attended um, funerals in the past, and it hits them really hard because it is kind of, in a way, it's like 
that teacher kind of pupil bond where you're trying to really support someone. So it, it has hit people really hard. Um, I personally have never um, encountered it because I only joined the job in December. Um, but I know in the past that has happened um, and everyone who's known that person from Julian House has always attended. There was, um, we have had family members who then organised kind of fundraising events for us afterwards because they've seen the kind of support that we do. So it's really, it's, it's very rewarding and um, reassuring to know that the family or anybody who um, was close to that person knows that we're trying to help them as much as possible. Are there ways people can get in touch with Julian House to volunteer or get advice? Yes, um, absolutely. I mean, we're always looking for volunteers. I think we have about 350 volunteers at Julian House, and they are absolutely vital. They um, help in our hostel, cooking cooking meals for um, anybody who comes in. Uh, they help in our supported accommodation. They help at our events and fundraising. Um, so all the volunteer opportunities are listed on our website. Um, for 16 plus, there's only opportunities really in our charity shop, but for for obviously 18 plus there's more opportunities because of like the vulnerability of our clients and the, the sensitivity um yep so that's all on our website and all our contact details are there too that's the end of all my questions is there anything else you would like to tell us about julian house um i think not necessarily tell tell us such but i think just to be aware that i guess while Julian Heist did start off as a homeless charity, it, it does it has broadened. Um, it's not just based in Bath; it's around the whole southwest, and so we help um, a huge range of people. Um, and I think to raise awareness for that is would be really important. That's really great to hear. Thank you for being here with us today, Jess. This has been the Bath Studio School. Thank you for watching.